Hello guys, welcome to the chemistry lesson. In today's lesson, we'll be continuing with the uh, nanometers. And the, in our previous lesson, we looked at the hydrogen. And then we looked at the physical properties and chemical properties of hydrogen. Then we also looked at the preparation of hydrogen in the laboratory. And then the uses of hydrogen. So today we'll continue and we'll be looking at uh, industrial preparation of hydrogen. So in today's lesson, we'll conclude the lesson on hydrogen, where we'll be looking at the industrial preparation of hydrogen. All right, so what you should know, guys, is that there are three methods which are used to prepare large amounts of hydrogen. <clears throat> so in industry, when hydrogen is needed in large quantities, it is prepared by three methods. So number one, we use uh, steam reformation. Then number two, uh, cracking of hydrocarbons and then number three uh, electrolysis of water though this one is not common but steam reformation and cracking of hydrogen uh, hydrocarbons is the most common or they are the two most common methods so now let's look at the industrial manufacturing of hydrogen by steam reformation so how hydrogen is formed by steam reformation all right so what we should know here guys is that the hydrogen is made by reacting natural gas which uh, is methane with steam in the presence of nickel catalyst at about 900 degrees celsius according to the following equation all right so like in section c when you are asked to describe how hydrogen is prepared by steam reformation in industry this is how you actually start your description so you start by saying hydrogen uh, is made by reacting natural gas uh, which is methane with steam in the presence of a nickel catalyst at about 900 degrees celsius according to the following equation so you write the weight equation methane plus this is what it is so you it is methane reacted with steam then this gives you um, carbon dioxide i mean carbon monoxide plus e hydrogen gas so this one can be converted into a chemical equation methane is this one ch4 gas then plus steam is h2o gas then this gives us carbon monoxide gas plus hydrogen gas then this equation is balanced by putting a three here also by yeah i think it is balanced just like that all right then from this stage the next stage which happens here is that the uh, carbon monoxide feather reacts with steam to form more hydrogen gas according to the following uh, chemical equation. So this uh, carbon monoxide here, uh, like in this stage of the reaction, little hydrogen is formed. So this carbon now reacts further with steam to form more hydrogen gas according to the following equation. So carbon reacts with the, carbon monoxide reacts with the, uh, steam to form uh, carbon dioxide and the hydrogen gas. All right. So this is now the final equation. So this is what is involved in the manufacture of hydrogen by uh, steam reformation. Now let's look at the second one, which is. Um, uh, the conditions necessary I mean we need to look at the conditions necessary for this uh, reaction includes so for this actually process to happen it requires these conditions so number one catalyst such as nickel the number two temperature of about 1000 here I said 900 you say 900 or 1000 it does not matter they are very close then also a pressure of 50 atmosphere all right, so these are the conditions required for this equation or reaction to happen. Very important, they are asked. So now let's look at now um, at industrial manufacturing of hydrogen by cracking of hydrocarbons. So actually cracking is actually the breaking down of long chain hydrocarbons into short simpler chain hydrocarbons. So now uh, for hydrogen to be formed as well, it can be formed by cracking hydrocarbons so this is how it it happens so hydrogen is also made by cracking hydrocarbons from petroleum in the presence of aluminium uh, aluminium oxide catalyst so you need to know a catalyst here 
some hydrogen is also made by cracking of hydrocarbons from petroleum in the presence of aluminum oxide catalyst so these hydrocarbons they come from petroleum and then this cracking happens in the presence of aluminum oxide catalyst then for example ethane is cracked to give ethene all right here should have been ethene so ethane is cracked to give ethene and hydrogen according to the following chemical reaction so here you have ethane ethane being cracked so it will be cracked using a catalyst to give ethene and also hydrogen gas so this can be represented as a c2h6 being cracked to give you ethene which is a c2h2 gas plus this hydrogen gas here this is how it is formed so this equation this uh, description just ends like that it's a short one then um, let's look at industrial manufacturing or industrial manufacture of hydrogen by electrolysis of acidified water so here uh, pure water is a very poor conductor that's what you should know pure water is a very poor conductor of electricity because there are there are few uh, there are so few ions in it now what happens is that to enable water to conduct electricity better some dilute sulfuric acid or sodium hydroxide solution is added all right so let's push this one up here so after this um, an electric current is passed through uh, an electric current is passed through uh, this solution and gas and gases can be seen to be produced at the two electrodes and collected in the side arms of the apparatus so roughly twice as much gas is produced at the cathode as at the anode yeah so let me just push this one up here and bring the apparatus we are talking about so this is an apparatus that is used to uh, produce hydrogen uh, industrially at in large quantity by electrolysis of uh, water so what happens is that they fill this apparatus with water to which sulfuric acid has been added so that conductivity is increased so when that one is done um, then electricity must be passed so this is a battery and the positive uh, the negative terminal becomes the cathode the positive terminal becomes the anode so when electricity passes through water then water is split into its components so when it is split into its components which are hydrogen and gas hydrogen is collected at the anode the positive terminal of the battery and then oxygen at the negative terminal i mean oxygen at the positive then hydrogen at the negative then um, much um, uh, gas is produced at the uh, uh, cathode twice uh, than that one is which is produced at uh, the anode so more hydrogen is produced than oxygen All right so the overall equation which occur is this so you have water here undergoing electrolysis it gives you a hydrogen gas plus uh, um, uh, oxygen gas which you can balance by putting a two there and a two there then you must also understand the test for hydrogen so the test for hydrogen is that uh, hydrogen gas burns with a pop sound when a burning splint is introduced introduced to it or in other words we say hydrogen puts out a burning split with a pop sound that is a chemical test for hydrogen very important so we are done with the, the hydrogen gas now we are going to look at the oxygen gas so let's talk about about oxygen gas now what about oxygen gas what information can we begin with so we can say it is a, uh, it is in group six of the periodic table and exists in two forms namely dioxygen common uh, oxygen that's what we call with we, we call it with this formula o2 and trioxygen o3 in fact this o3 is also called ozone 
So the other information we should know about oxygen gas is that it makes up to about it makes about 21 percent of our of air by volume yeah so the air which is in uh in the atmosphere 21 percent of it is oxygen then uh, oxygen is the most important gas in the air and we need it for the process called respiration that goes on in all our cells to produce energy all right so now let's look at um, physical properties of oxygen so number one for us to know oxygen well we should know that oxygen is a colorless gas the number two meaning we cannot see it the number two oxygen is tasteless tasteless meaning it does not have taste the number three oxygen is quite soluble in water so it can dissolve in water and this property that makes the organism to live in water and then be able to breathe oxygen all right then let's push this one up here so another property is that oxygen has approximately the same density as the air yeah so the density of hydrogen is approximately uh, approximately the same as that of air then number five it is neutral to litmus paper meaning that uh, it does not have effect on litmus paper so it is actually a neutral substance so now we are done with the physical properties of oxygen now let's move to chemical properties of oxygen so number one is that oxygen supports combustion so many things burn in oxygen so that's a physical a chemical property of it so it supports combustion so number two oxygen reacts with metals to form metallic oxides as shown by the following examples so yeah oxygen reacts with metals to form metallic oxides so we have for instance oxygen if it reacts with a metal then we form what we call metal oxide so let's push it up here so for instance if we have oxygen sorry here it should have been in g gas oxygen gas plus a metal let's say magnesium solid then it will give us magnesium oxide which will be solid we we'll put a two here to balance the equation and also a two here then another physical property is that oxygen reacts with nanometals to form nanometallic oxides according to the following equation so it will react oxygen with the nanometals to form nanometallic nanometallic oxides according to the following equation where we have oxygen plus nanometal it will give us a nanometal oxide eg if we have oxygen gas here even here because i copied this one produced here without not seeing it was air which is wrong g here plus let's say carbon dioxide gas carbon i mean um it will give us carbon dioxide which is an oxide all right so another physical property i mean chemical property of oxygen is that oxygen causes rusting of ion in the presence of water yeah so this rusting of ion i'm sure you remember we did corrosion where we talked about rusting of ion all right so these are the chemical properties of foam uh, oxygen now let's look at the laboratory preparation of oxygen so under laboratory preparation of oxygen you should know that the two commonly uh, used methods to prepare oxygen in the laboratory are uh, one we have what we call catalytic decomposition of hydrogen peroxide catalytic decomposition of hydrogen peroxide and two we have a thermal catalytic decomposition of potassium chlorate so these are the two major compounds that are used to prepare hydrogen in the laboratory uh, methods i mean catalytic decomposition of hydrogen peroxide and then thermal catalytic decomposition of potassium chlorate so let's begin with the first one preparation of hydrogen by catalytic decomposition of hydrogen peroxide so what happens if you are asked to describe this is how the process happens how it, this process happens so the experiment is set up as shown below magnesium manganese 4 oxide powder is added into a conical flask and hydrogen peroxide added to the flask drop by drop through a fist of funnel yeah so here we need hydrogen 
uh, to prepare hydrogen we need manganese for oxide so this one is a ca catalyst though i haven't mentioned it here and that's why this method is called catalytic decomposition meaning hydrogen is decomposed or broken down hydrogen peroxide is broken down using a catalyst to form oxygen yeah that's what happens here so magnesium four oxide acts as a catalyst so magnesium four oxide powder is added into a conical flask and hydrogen peroxide added to the flask drop by drop through a fist of funnel so let's push up here so that we show the experimental setup so this is how the experiment is set up this is a round bottom uh, bottom flask where they put manganese four oxide which is also known as manganese dioxide here then uh, uh, this is a dropping funnel then uh, hydrogen peroxide is added through there then this um, uh, hydrogen peroxide now will decompose to give hydrogen gas which is collected here over water so we are saying hydrogen peroxide decomposes into water and hydrogen i mean and oxygen sorry here it should be read oxygen hydrogen peroxide decomposes into water and the oxygen gas here guys then we are saying the gas is collected over water so this gas is collected over water so the equation is hydrogen peroxide liquid form over uh, manganese catalyst manganese four oxide catalyst you get water and then you get oxygen gas so you balance the equation by putting a two here and a two here all right so this is basically what happens uh, about um or well, it's all about this preparation of oxygen by catalytic decomposition of hydrogen peroxide this is what you need to know so now let's look at um, preparation of oxygen by thermocatalytic decomposition of potassium chlorate so here now we are using potassium chlorate so they are calling thermocatalytic meaning you need the catalyst and also heat so here a mixture of potassium chlorate and manganese four oxide are placed in the uh, heating test tube and the apparatus is set up as shown so this is how the apparatus is set up so here uh, potassium chlorate is placed here and also manganese four oxide placed here Mommy. and then they are heated then after they are heated then they decompose to form uh, oxygen here okay bye then what happens here is that uh, uh, potassium chlorate this is potassium chlorate uh, over manganese four oxide catalyst then it gives the uh, potassium chloride plus the oxygen gas all right so the equation can be balanced by putting a three here all right so also a two there and then a two here now let's look at the, the test for hydrogen i mean for oxygen test for oxygen gas so what you should know the test for oxygen gas is that when a glowing split is held at the mouth of a test tube containing oxygen gas the glowing splint relights or rekindles or bursts into flame so the test for hydrogen gas or the chemical test for hydrogen uh, oxygen gas is that when a glowing splint is held at the mouth of a test tube containing oxygen gas the glowing splint relights uh, rewrites or rekindles or bursts into flame all right so guys we have come to the end of this um, um, lesson on uh, oxygen though it is not complete we are going to complete this lesson with the industrial preparation of oxygen and then the uses of oxygen as for now guys bye and see you in the next lesson and i hope you did enjoy this lesson